work. What is heat? Heat is a process to measure the energy transferred due to temperature difference. You have learned this before. Now we know what is work. Work is the process of energy transfer due to a force. In the diagram, a body is applied by a force F through a displacement S. F and S makes an angle theta. The work by the force F is defined as W equal to F S cosine theta, where F is the force in Newton. S is a displacement of the body in meter. And theta is the angle between F and S. Therefore, the unit of work is Newton meter. Since work is a process of energy transfer, therefore, the unit of work W can also be joules. Case one: If F and S are parallel, and F and S in the same direction, then we can compute the table. If F is one, S is zero, then the work done on the body equal to F S, which is zero. If F is one, S is one. The work done on the body is one times one, which is one newton meter. For F is ten, S is one. The work done is ten times one, which is ten Nm. If F is one, S is ten. Then work is one times ten, which is ten Nm. If F is one hundred. S is five. We have work is one hundred times five, which is five hundred Nm for joules. Case two. If F and S are not parallel, that means F and S makes an angles theta. In the table, if F is one, S is one. Theta is zero degree. We have work done equal to F S cosine theta. Therefore, work equal to one time one time cosine zero degree, which is one Nm. If F is one, S is one. Theta is thirty degree. Work done equal to one time one times cosine thirty degree, which is zero point. X seven Nm. If F is one, S is one. Theta sixty degree. Work done is one time one time cosine sixty degree, which is zero point five. If F is one, S is one. Theta is ninety degree. Work done is one time one time cosine ninety degree, which is equal to zero. If F is one, S is one. Theta is one hundred and eighty degree. That is, <coughs> S, F are in opposite directions. Theta is one x zero degree. Then the work done is one times one times cosine. Look that work on an object W can be zero under the following cases. The first case, since work equal to F S cosine theta, if F equal to zero, then W equal to zero. 
For example, a trolley moves with uniform velocity on a smooth horizontal surface. In this case, acceleration equal to zero. That means the force applied on the body is zero. The second case for work equal to zero is that the displacement of the body is zero. That means the body is at rest. S is zero. For example, a book is held stationary by the hand. Case three, when theta equal to 90 degrees, we have work equal to F S cosine 90 degrees, which is zero. The example is that the book is held by the head of a boy who walks forward at a constant velocity. In this case, the displacement and the force supplied by the head to the book are perpendicular and theta equal to 90 degree. Work and kinetic energy. Consider a block of mass M. It's pulled by force F in the directions to the right on a smooth horizontal plane. After a displacement S, the velocity of the body changes from U to V. Then, by second law, F equal to MA equal to M V square minus U square over 2S. We have F S equal to M V square over 2 minus M U square over 2. Since F S is the work done on the body and since work is a change of energy therefore we have in this case the work is used to change the kinetic energy which is Ke final minus Ke initial Ke final is half mv square and Ke initial is half mu square. Therefore, we have an expression for the kinetic energy of a body is equal to half mv square. What is the relation between work and gravitational potential energy? Consider a block of mass m being lifted up by force at uniform velocity from A to B for a displacement S equal to the height increases. From the force diagram, the force F must compensate for the weight of the body throughout the motion. Therefore, we have work done by the body from A to B equal to F S, which is equal to M G, where S is H. Now, the work done from A to B is change the potential energy of the body. We call this gravitational potential energy from A to B, therefore, work equal to 
potential energy at B minus potential energy at A. If we take potential energy at A to be zero, then the potential energy at B is equal to mgh. Therefore, we have an expression for the gravitational potential energy of a body equal to mgh. What is elastic potential energy? An elastic object will store elastic potential energy when it is being stretched or being compressed. Example, in a catapult, the rubber band is pulled backward by a force. In this case, the rubber band is being stretched and store elastic potential energy. Notice that the greater the extension or the greater the compression, the greater the elastic potential energy stored. Another example, in a bow as shown, the elastic string is pulled backward by a force. And we say elastic potential energy is stored by the string. When the string is released, elastic potential energy of the string will change to kinetic energy of the arrow. Another example, in a pole wand, when the man put the pole into the hole, his kinetic energy will change to elastic potential energy of the pole when the pole is bent. Mechanical energy Me is equal to the sum of potential energy plus kinetic energy. But the law of conservation of mechanical energy it states that in the absence of frictional force, the mechanical energy of a body is conserved. That means the sum of kinetic energy and usually only gravitational energy Therefore, the sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy equal to a constant value. Or we say the loss of kinetic energy equal to the gain in potential energy. Or the reverse, the loss of potential energy equal to the gain in kinetic energy. Let's see some examples of conservations of mechanical energy. A, the free fall motion. B, is a pendulum motion. C, is a roller coaster motion. D, is a bungee jump. A, free falling motion. Example one. A ball of mass, 1 kg, is projected vertically upward 
with initial speed 20 meter per second. Part A. Initial kinetic energy equal to half m u square equal to half 1 square of 20 which is equal to 200 joules. Part B. At the height of 2 meters, the potential energy equal to mgh by taking the potential energy at the ground level is zero. Therefore, PE equal to mgh equal to 1 times 9.81 times 2, which is equal to 19.6 joules. By conservation of mechanical energy, the kinetic energy Ke at the height of 2 meter is equal to the total mechanical energy 200 joules minus the increase in potential energy 19.6 which is equal to 180 joules. Part C By the conservation of energy, we have the maximum potential energy PE maximum should be equal to the total mechanical energy which is equal to 200 joules and we have mg h maximum equal to 200 1 times 9.81 times maximum height equal to 200 therefore the maximum height reached by the ball equal to 20.4 meter. Part D. We draw the graph of potential energy with height h. We have potential energy equal to mgh which is proportional to h. Therefore, the graph of PE against H should be a straight line. For part 3, since mechanical energy is independent of height and it is constant value which is equal to 200 joules. Therefore, the graph for mechanical energy should be a horizontal line and the values is 200 joules. By conservation of mechanical energy, we have Ke plus Pe equal to Me. Therefore, Ke equal to Me minus Pe. Therefore, the graph of Ke with height h should be a straight line dropping to zero. Notice that Ke plus Pe is a constant value which is equal to Me. Example 2. A tennis ball of mass 0 0.1 kg is released at a height of 10 meters from the ground and we take gravitational potential energy on the ground to be zero part A express the velocity of the tennis ball V in terms of time T we know that V equal to U plus GT since u is zero, 
we have V equal to GT, where G is 9.81. For part B, the kinetic energy KE is equal to half m v square, which is equal to half m square of gt, which is equal to half m g square t square, proportional to t square. Therefore, the graph of kinetic energy with time t should be a curve with increasing slope this is ke because ke is proportional to square of t since ke plus pe is constant we have the graph for gravitational potential energy with time should be the curve like this one. That, notice that the sum of PE and KE at any time is a constant which is the mechanical energy of the ball. For part C, we have gain in KE equal to lose in PE from 1 to 2. The distance is H. The gain in KE is KE at 2 minus KE at 1 equal to Loose in PE is MGH. Since KE at 1 is 0, therefore the kinetic energy at the point 2 equal to 1, 0 0.1 times 9.81 times 4, which is equal to 3.92 joules. Just before it hits the ground, we have KE at 3 equal to MGH, where H is equal to 10 meters. Therefore, KE at 3 is 0 0.1 times 9.81 times 10, which is equal to 9.81 joules. B. Consider pendulum motion. Example 3. In a pendulum of length 1 meter, a ball of mass 0 0.2 kg is released at x which is 0 0.4 meters from the lowest point B. Part A. Find the kinetic energy of the ball when it passes B. From A to B, the loss in potential energy equal to the gain in kinetic energy. We have mgh equal to half m v b square minus half m v a square. v a is zero. We have the kinetic energy at B equal to MGH which is 0 0.2 times 9.81 times 0 
Therefore, kinetic energy at B equal to 0 0.785 joules. And the speed of the ball at B is equal to square root 2 gh equal to square root 2 times 9.81 times 0 0.4 which is equal to 2.80 meter per second for part B by conservation of mechanical energy we have The maximum height of the ball above B when it swings to the other side should be the same as the height of A above B, which is 0 0.4 meters. Example 4. A pendulum has length 1 meter, a ball of mass 1 kg is projected downward at A with a speed of 2 meter per second. Find the kinetic energy of the ball when it passes through the lowest point B. Consider the motion of the ball from A to B. We have loss in potential energy equal to the gain in kinetic energy, which is mgh, where h is equal to 1 minus 1 times cosine 60 degree which is equal to 0 0.5 meter. Therefore, the loss in PE is mgh equal to ke at B minus ke at A. We have 1 times 9.81 times 0 0.5 equal to ke at B minus half M is 1 times VA square, which is square of 2. Therefore, the kinetic energy at B equal to 6.91 joules by KE equal to half M V square. We have half times 1 times Vb square equal to 6.91 therefore the speed of the ball at B is Vb equal to 3.72 meter per second for part B let's let the greatest height of the ball above B when it swings to the other side be C At the highest point, we have speed of C is 0, the height is H maximum. By conservation of energy, we have Ke at A plus Pe at A equal to Ke at C plus Pe at C. Since Ke at C is equal to 0, we have half m Va square plus mg ha equal to mg hc. Eliminate m and substitute Va equal to 2 H A equal to zero point five. We got H C equal to 
zero point seven zero four meter. Let's see the case C, which is roller coaster, Go San Chair. Example five. In a roller coaster, a car of mass two thousand kilogram is released at P. That means V P is zero, which is fifty meters above Q. The car runs down a smooth track and passes through the highest point of the circular loop R. Given that radius of the loop is ten meter. Find the speed of the car at Q and at R. From P to Q. Lose in potential energy equal to gain in kinetic energy. We have m g h, where h is fifty meters, equal to half m v q square minus half m v p square. Since V P is zero, we have nine point eight one times fifty equal to half V Q square. Therefore, V Q equal to thirty one point three meter per second. Part B. From P to R. Lose in P E equal to gain in K E. Again, the lose in P E from P to R is m g h pi, where h pi equal to fifty minus twenty, which is thirty meters. The loss in P E M G pi equal to gain in K E is K E at R minus K E at P. K E at P is zero. Therefore, we got M G H pi equal to half M V R square. We have nine point eight one times. Thirty equal to half v r square. Therefore, the speed at r is v r equal to twenty four point three meter per second. Example six. A ball is projected at a speed of twelve meter per second at the point A. Towards a smooth slope of height seven meter, by considering the conservation of energy, justify whether the ball can pass the highest point P. In answering these questions, let's consider if the ball goes from A to P, the increase. In potential energy, would be equal to m g h, which is m times nine point eight one times seven, which is equal to sixty eight point seven m. The kinetic energy of the ball at A is equal to half m v a square. Which is half m times square of twelve, which is equal to seventy two m. Because the k e at a is larger than 
the increase in potential energy when it moves from A to P therefore it can pass through the highest point P the last case is bungee jump in a bungee jump a man of weight W is tied to an elastic rope of lateral length L. Lateral length means the length at which the string or the rope has not been stretched. The man then falls from west from a cliff. The motion of the man can be described, explained in terms of force acting on him and the energy conservation in each of the following stages. In stage 1, the length of the rope L is smaller than the lateral length of the rope. In this case, the only force on the man is its weight. Therefore, force equal to W equal to mg implying the acceleration is equal to G. That means he is falling freely under gravity. During this stage, the potential energy the gravitational potential energy change to kinetic energy in stage 2 the length of the rope L is equal to the lateral length of the rope in this case the only force acting on the body is also its weight in time, the acceleration is also equal to g. During this stage, the potential energy, or we say gravitational potential energy, is changed to kinetic energy. For stage 3, when the length of the rope increases such that L is longer than the lateral length of the string. In this case, there are two forces acting on the man. One is its weight and the other is the tension of the rope, which is upward. In this case, the left force is W minus tension T. And since W is larger than T, therefore the force is still larger than zero, but, but it is smaller than its weight, therefore the acceleration is smaller than G. Or we say the acceleration is decreasing. During this stage, the gravitational potential energy of the man changed to kinetic energy and elastic potential energy stored by the rope. A stage 4 When the length of the rope increased further to L pi, which is longer than the lateral length of the rope, such that the weight is balanced by the tension. That means weight equal to the tension. Then the left force on the man is W minus T will be equal to zero. In this case, the acceleration is zero and the speed of the man becomes maximum.
In this case, during this stage, we say gravitational potential energy change to kinetic energy and elastic potential energy. For stage 5, when the length of the rope increases further, in this stage, the weight will be smaller than the tension. Therefore, the lead force on the man, W minus T, will be smaller than zero, implying that the acceleration becomes negative. That means the man is falling with deceleration, and eventually it will stop instantly at a certain position. During this stage, the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy change to elastic potential energy. The VT graph for different stages can be shown in a graph. Stage 1 and 2 Stage 3 and Stage 4 Stage 5 <clears throat> Example 7 Peter of mass 60 kg takes bungee jump from a cliff of height 200 meters from the sea. He stands on the platform and the elastic rope is 40 meters long before stretching. Part A Find Peter's speed when he falls a distance of 30 meters from the platform. From A to B, the PE loose equal to KE gain. We have mg h equal to half m v b square minus half m v a square. V a is zero. And eliminating m, we have 9.81 times 30 equal to half vb square. Therefore, vb equal to 24.3 meter per second. For part b, when Peter falls a distance of 100 meters, He becomes instantaneous at rest at a point C. That means Vc is zero. What is the energy stored by the elastic rope? When the man falls from A to C, the gravitational potential energy lost. You change to elastic potential energies stored by the rope. That means the energy stored by the rope is elastic potential energy, which is equal to loss in gravitational potential energy, which is mgh equal to 60 times 9.81 times 100, which is equal to 5.89 times 10 to the power 4 joules.